Yeah, unfortunately, the camera, Vasil's camera is like that in the Zoom call. I don't really want to break their concentration, so I will leave it. Um, they started already. Let's see. Yeah, they did start. Very strange. I thought I clicked Gata's TV, but they are on the way. We've only missed four moves and uh, Vasil opens with d4. We saw him in the first half of the match try everything. He tried one d4, one c4 and one e4. And yeah, I will leave Chucky alone. This is how he's going to be. But I guess we still see, uh, still see enough of him. Um, let me just get... That was that break went so quickly with the weight, but of course it's so great to have almost two thousand of you here. Let me just get one sip of water because it wasn't much of a break for us. But just uh, again for all the Raiders, this is a match uh, in sixteen games, best of sixteen. As you can see under the board, the score is currently tied for a piece. That means they will now play eight more games, and if after that the match is still tied. Uh, they will play one Armageddon game. Why not 17 games? Because in chess it tends to be the norm to play the same amount of games with the white pieces and the black pieces. That's why. And yeah, Frozen is pointing out uh, Vasil did indeed swap rooms <laughs> during the break. Alex, I will let you take over and I will take the, my chance to run to the bathroom. Yeah, maybe I could uh, change the, change the, the tags if that makes things better. Okay, so we'll probably see a bit more of their uh, faces. I'll be back in two seconds. Just quick bathroom break. So, uh, hello again, uh, guys. I just wanna say uh, one thing in case anybody is unfamiliar with either of these players. I hope I, uh, I hope Fiona didn't say it and, and I simply didn't hear it, uh, but just a very quick introduction on these two players uh, for anybody who's new. On the top is Vasily Ivanchuk, at his peak, world number two. Many people consider him to have been, you know, one of the absolute strongest players in modern times uh, who did not get to, to become world champion. And, and of course, Gata Kamsky, he's a streamer himself, so I think more people will know him online. Uh, certainly more people who are, you know, new to the game will be, I think, familiar with Kamsky's name. Um, again, his credentials are simply impeccable. Five-time US champion. Uh, he was one of the absolute prodigy as a kid uh, at his best, I think ranked number four at his highest in, in the world. So these guys are absolutely um, world-class players and, and players who had a tremendous influence on the game, uh, especially in the um, 80s, 90s, in particular the 90s and the noughties. So uh, what is happening in this particular game, the first of the second half, it's Kamsky with the black pieces, and we will be following, we followed Ivanchuk's side for the first half of the match. Now we're gonna follow it from Kamsky's side. And what we see is that White has built up this center and therefore has a little bit more space. And now the question is, can White actually keep that center? Can White defend it? And then, you know, black is going to be a little bit stuck. And thank you for everyone, by the way, just who donated and gifted subs and all that. Uh, and bits during the break much appreciated hopefully i'll find more time to thank you all after but they have been treating us to some fantastic chess so that's what we're going to be focusing on and now the format is 16 games of three plus two and uh armageddon game if they are tied in the end yes so um and my one shout out my mom just subscribed in the chat <laughs> so mom Hello and thank you for subscribing. <laughs> thank you for the subscription. <laughs> okay, so back to the game. And hope she's enjoying the match. Hope so, yeah. I think she's watching. Both my mom and my dad must be watching together. So shout out to my parents. <laughs> okay, back to the game. So super sharp game. One of the reasons it's super sharp, all the pieces are on the board. There's only been a couple of pawns traded for each side, but all of the pieces are on the board. And that means so many more different possibilities, so many more different plans. So a lot of the time in those spots, you need two things. You need a good intuition mm -hmm. because you don't have much time to decide between all the plans. So you better have strong intuition. And you also need to be fast at calculating things. You need to be able to say, if he goes here, I go there, he goes here, I go there. And to do this kind of you know uh, process, to do that really, really uh, quickly. 
And here you can see that the tension is just increasing uh, for both sides. I think knight b4 is a really strong move from Gata though, because you have the threat is to take the queen. And now if white uh, takes on b4, then black at least has the bishop pair and has managed to exchange a couple of minor pieces. That's useful for black. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is because white has more space. So the more space that white has, the less room for the pieces that black has. So and it's good for, good to exchange, sorry. Yeah. yeah, we have Grandmaster Alexander Rusimov in the chat who, I don't know, uh, tell us Alexander, is he a similar uh, generation to Gata? But I guess they knew each other from a young age and he said he did, you know, he loved playing the Grunfeld, especially as a, when he was younger. So super interesting, by the way, I don't know what exactly the players saw, but queen takes a3, this pawn was offered, I suspect rook a1, queen takes b4, and rook e, uh, db1, where do you go with the queen? The queen but notice trapped. black just did like that, queen yeah. c7, not interested in the pawn. The speed with which they understand these but things is, is mind-blowing. In this game, Gata needs to keep a close, a close eye on his clock, he's down to 20 seconds, Vasil still has almost one minute. Yeah, and well, the position is incredibly complex, this is a super risky move. e6 opens up the bishop, opens up the queen, opens up the knight. I'm surprised that Ivanchuk did, uh, did go for this move, and black already invading with the queen. I know you guys had just asked me to put the name tag on the other side, but it seems like Vasil decided he prefers that side of the screen for now. So let's move it back because especially his facial, you know, he's such a great player to watch. For sure. And C sets uh, with a comment that Kamsky's play is always smooth. I really agree with that, actually. I think Kamsky's play is very, I don't know. Yeah, there's a smoothness to it. I don't know if that's the, the exact word, but he just has such great board vision. And somehow, even in the chaos, he always seems to have a degree of control. But the same could be said for Ivanchuk, which is why I think they're trading blows. Um, position incredibly complex. One thing, if you're black, you're extremely worried about this pawn yeah. on e6. Because how are you going to complete the development? And not to mention, you've pushed all your kingside pawns. So do not be surprised if the black king gets into trouble at some point. On the other hand, Development has happened here. Knight e5 threatening on g6, and now a double threat here from black. Exchange queens or take on g2. But what's going to happen? What are you going to do if you're black? You lose that pawn. You have to go passive with the rook here, but that's not a happy square for the rook. Even some bishop a4 at some point could eye it up, but even stronger. I really like what he's doing here. Rook c1 threatening to come in with c7. Now you have to watch out for knight e2. Mm. Do not blunder, and White certainly does not blunder, is aware of this. 15 seconds each, though. It's getting very, very messy here. F3, maybe just kick out this bishop. And then here, Rook takes C3. Rook takes C3. Looks like a nice tactical opportunity. That's been spotted. I think that was a blunder by Gata. The point is, Bishop takes. Bishop takes D5. Gata shakes his head. Uh, so, well, it's incredible because... Eventually takes the lead again. Yes. I mean, they've really been trading blows. They've... Uh, Gata took the lead in the first game, then Ivanchuk. I can't even count, you know, how many town times yeah. they've switched uh, leads I in mean, the match. For those who want to see, uh, they can actually sort of see the, the, the chronology. You can actually yeah. see here at the bottom, not just the score, but the way in which they've traded blows. There hasn't been more than two wins in a row for either player so far in the match. But right now, uh, Gata has to make sure he doesn't lose with the black pieces, otherwise the Ivanchuk uh, steam, ro <laughs> steam train, let's say, uh, will keep rolling. Because I, that's one thing I also said before the match that Ivanchuk, I was actually hoping um, that, you know, Ivanchuk couldn't lose a few games at the start. Uh, not because I'm biased or anything like that, but because Ivanchuk, we have seen many times over the board, you know, if he starts with a bad streak, he tends to lose his, you know, enthusiasm a little bit. Uh, it can happen sometimes where he's just, you know, loses not not his enthusiasm but uh, here i'm very glad he's very much in the match uh, he's very focused and he's treating us to some fantastic jazz as as his yeah. kata gata of course yeah ivanchuk did not come here just to <laughs> yeah. play some coffee house chess you might notice by the way if you're new you might be wondering wait a second why does a player of the caliber of ivanchuk have a rating under 1000 <laughs> that would be a fair question but the point is ivanchuk has played in his account a bunch of games and we actually, we said to him, if you want to tell this story, uh, perhaps, like we basically said... Yeah, I said, if you want to create a new account, but he said, no, um, Pizzamo, some people know me as, and I've used the account to play some games. 
against some children. So that's why he wasn't playing at his best. It's still a provisional rating, as you can see. But that's sort of the character that he is, you know. He loves chess so much, he will use his accounts, you know. Some people might use it to get the highest rating they can get. The last match we had Altemiev, who was the highest rated uh, player on on uh, Lee Chess and Blitz at the time. But today we have Ivan who uses his account to play uh, games against children. I mean, I think most people can probably relate to Artemiev's, uh, you know, desire to have your rating basically as, as high as possible. But Ivanchuk, you know, they have said, and very jokingly, he's very well liked, but people have said, uh, you know, Ivanchuk lives on planet Ivanchuk. This was, I think, Vichy Anand, uh, you know, former world champion who said this, if I'm not mistaken. And, uh, you know, Ivanchuk does things his way, but I think that's one of the reasons he's yeah. so well liked. Absolutely. Shall we talk a little bit about Let's go back to this the game. tricky game? Um, a lot of pieces have been exchanged and Gata is playing his typical systems where basically you put all your pawns like this on dark squares, but that dark squared bishop, you've made sure to first step it out of the pawn chain. So the bishop has an influence in the game. That would be a very sad piece if mm. it was stuck behind this wall of dark squared pawns. But as it is, this bishop is a very strong piece. At the same time, this pawn structure fights very well against this bishop here because it's really really solid structure on d4 supported by both pawns and you have this bishop that is kind of blunted by the fact that that d4 is is overprotected um here by the way gata signaling aggressive intentions he does not want to exchange queens but gata just lost two games in a row and look at his camera like he does seem a little bit, you know, yes. um, I don't know how to even put it, not deflated, but I mean, it's tough and he needs to, he needs to bounce back, um, you know, soon. At least here with the white pieces, it's very important that he doesn't lose a, another game, a third game in a row. Yeah, I mean, I completely agree. And I think part of the reason why Gatem might be a little upset <laughs> is because he feels that he hasn't gotten much out of this opening. Maybe here. I should just put it here for both players, then we won't have the issue of it getting in the way anymore. Let me move it up the tiniest bit more. Boom, boom. Where am I? Alex, you have to talk about the game. I'm doing ah. my, <laughs> my technical prowesses. Okay, I think that's fine now. Hopefully we'll always see their faces at all times. Well, there's been there's been a huge development at uh, in the game. Let's say at the at these at these levels, this is a huge move. Now you might be looking at this if you're if you're most of, most of, most players, right? They look at this move and they might think, well, that's just you know a pawn move. You move the pawn one square, no big deal. But that's a huge move because now this bishop on g3 is suddenly a way stronger piece. It exerts influence on e5 and on c7. When the queen moves away, you immediately have to do something about this threat. And so what black does is he takes here on d4 and after c takes d4 we see that suddenly the c file has opened up and uh, at the same time you know this bishop on g3 is very strong but Ivanchuk's idea was my bishop is doing nothing here mm. i'm going to take that bishop onto f8 and then i'm going to try and place it maybe on d6 and get rid of this strong bishop or maybe i'll even put the bishop on b4 because one of the drawbacks to playing a4 and then losing your c-pawn is that square on b4 it's it's under black control right we have this pawn on a5 and again if you're relatively new to the game you might be like okay this is one square is a little bit weak but at these levels the margins are very thin and the attention to detail is exceptional so even an entire strategy can hinge around something as simple as one weak square what about the e5 square? Maybe you can circle it for people who might not be yep. the e5 square. Is that a square um, that the knight might want to go to or are there other, other outposts? For sure, for sure. I think that the e5 square is beautiful and I call this kind of like a semi-outpost and that's exactly what seems to be happening. Knight f3, that knight is probably looking to go to e5 where it's going to hit the queen, but I would say the e5 square is not actually its final destination. Mm. Where do you think that knight might want to go after e5 to maybe g4 sometimes g4? not not now but and make use of the the dark squares around the king if the black moves retreat yeah if this knight for example knight. moves at some point absolutely knight here knight here and then striking at those dark squares 
but c6 is definitely very attractive here knight e5 and knight c6 and now we see knight e5 here queen f5 you can't jump to c6 just yet though mm. because your rook is hanging yeah so white will probably do something about rook this e2 when double rooks on the c5 i now like i like that deeper. idea i also like rook e2 i don't know maybe presumably when gata reviews his game he realized rook e2 <laughs> absolutely the move and and you know he'll, he'll shake his head how could i not have seen it okay i'm sure they had some he had some very good very good reason but of course we cannot catch all of the reasons um, and now the times uh this time event shook is actually i'm very impressed i have to say by gata i'm not surprised you know we mentioned he is a streamer by the way the players command which has just been used make sure to go and give gata a follow he plays a lot of online chess he streams a lot uh, but in fact event shook i wasn't sure but he lost the first game on time but after that it's been very impressive his handling i think of the clock yeah, I mean, these guys show that, look, yeah, maybe I'm not somebody who plays online all the time, but I know a thing or two about time management, yeah. right? And, and I know a thing or two about spotting chess tactics quickly. So maybe Ivanchuk is showing us, hey, you know, this whole thing about online experience and being sharp, maybe it's not as big of a deal as, as, as you guys but think. But what I happens don't know. now is the d4, ah, he takes with the knight, of course, uh, after bishop takes, the pawn would have dropped. Yeah, and exactly. now is this ending just equal? Knight d3 surprises me. I would have thought knight e2 to reroute that knight to c3 to put pressure on d5. But I think the idea behind knight d3 is you want to control some important squares. For example, the f4 square so that black pieces cannot mm. invade the white position. I think this is probably going uh, to, be, uh, to end up in a draw. Certainly if neither side wants to make progress, then it's going to be a draw. I think if one side wants to push, it's going to be Gata with the white pieces. He could do f4, f5. But Gata says, you know what, I was in, maybe even in danger at some point. We also, we talked about the Russian school. I was saying, I think it's important that Gata does not lose a third uh, game. Both players are very much of the Russian school, the Soviet school of chess. And I even heard this as a young player, the Russia, you know, the Russian school, the Soviet school stopped the bleeding. Yeah. And in Absolutely. this in this position, we saw that end game, you know, in game eight, where it looked like uh, Gata, you know, he had the draw, and suddenly something happened. So you kind of, I'm not saying, you know, that Gata was afraid to play on anything like that, but it's just it's nice to sometimes stop the the losing streak. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, one thing that I've been told by like really strong grandmasters is that, for example, Swedish number one uh, Grandelius, Grandmaster Niels Grandelius, he was here earlier. And I remember he recently commented uh, to me that actually in Blitz, momentum is even more yeah. important. So, you know, maybe Gata knows this, has heard about it or has lived that experience mm -hmm. and says, you know what, I don't want to give Vasily three in a row, mm -hmm. as, it's, as, as, as you were saying. So I, I, would, I would think you're right. By the way, I've completely, I've reminded you guys about the format, the players, uh, all of that. But one thing I haven't uh, said yet is, of course, uh, well, not of course, but after the match, we will have an interview with both players. So when the match is over, don't go anywhere. Uh, Vasil and Gata will both be with us and we'll be able to ask them some questions. Yeah, th this, this will be very interesting, no matter the result of the uh, match. Let's talk a little bit about this game. We're getting uh, another, I think, uh, another hint uh, here very early. I'll just for one second drop back to move two. Here, I think uh, Gata hinting at uh, King's Indian and indeed, uh, in fact, actually going for King's Indian, but same-ish variation, a little bit of a different uh, approach from um, Ivanchuk. And to be honest, these positions, King's Indian positions, highly complex. Here's what you kind of need to, the basics of the strategy, what you need to know. The bishop on g7 uh, here, this fast development, allows white to grab a big center here. However, black counts on at some point undermining that center with some pawn moves. And the fact of the matter is, while white was busy building this big center, he was spending moves. Mm -hmm. And moves, time is money on the chessboard as well. And so in the meantime, black is developing and then he, the reasoning is, when I strike in the center, you're not going to be ready to meet it. And I'm going to break down that, you know, beautiful center that I let you build. Of course, white's reasoning is very different. Uh, and it's, you know, it's, look, actually, you cannot do that so mm -hmm. easily. But the King's Indian is one of the oldest and, and most respected openings in chess um, at, a, at a high level and uh, indeed at any level. So this is uh, a very, very complex fight. Why, where it gets a little bit more complicated is when the players start to play here on the queen side. 
you know because if you're playing the king's indian you're usually thinking you know oh i will attack i will do all of this kind of different stuff that's usually what happens but then you kick it up a notch and these guys say oh there are some subtle points to playing on the queen side i'll take advantage of this and that this and that move order and the subtlety and the nuance play really starts to be kind of inaccessible for for us i mean we're not speaking just for the viewers but for for us as well i mean it's it's, it's, I was it's a bit worried tricky. about that I had a, the match actually because they are so you know um, and we've seen so many crazy positions where it's it's tough uh, for me so for those of you again there's so many newbies my rating is like 2150 2150 Alex is like 2300 2430 something like that and even trust it's so sometimes you know like as you say above our pay grade <laughs> yeah yeah for sure for sure um, but let's 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 try and figure out what is going on here. Uh, so white has a, an advantage in space here, yeah. and one of the things this black bishop here it's not it's not very effective. Um, so black in general wants to exchange pieces, and here we see that exchange, but it's come at a price because now white recaptures with the pawn. And what are you going to do about this pawn? I'm not loving Gata's position, but knight c4 does defend the pawn twice with both the queen and the knight. White takes here. That means he can grab this pawn, but uh, it's kind of, you know, white has grabbed the pawn, now this pawn is under fire. Can we push it to b6? Can we push that pawn? Push to b6 or defend it by a c3. I think those are your options. And look at Ivanchuk. Look at the focus. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think it's a very, very tricky decision. If you play b6, you give control of certain squares, like c6 and a6, and maybe you'll regret that, some bishop a6, some c3, things like that. I think it's also very interesting that Ivanchuk, you know, the hand comes off the mouse uh, on, uh, onto the head, full concentration. These players know when it's important to take a timeout, and maybe, you know, it's quite short games, 3 plus 2, but he knows this is a, a critical moment of the game. Yeah, and he does, and he does in the end go for knight c3, uh, one of the advantages of playing like this, by the way, the bishop on a5 covers the d8 square, so you know rook d8. Um, if you put the pawn on b6, maybe rook d8 and a lot of pressure on the central pawn. Yeah. f6 makes a lot of sense. You're looking to crack open uh, this bishop's influence on the game. With f6, if white takes here, maybe even bishop takes f6, and suddenly you're threatening to take on d4. And that's a, that's a great move, I think, f6. You could go f4 and hope that after this exchange, the position stays like this, uh, but rook takes f1, and suddenly you cannot take back with the queen, which is what you would prefer, because mm. taking with the king, your king is very vulnerable, but if you take with the queen, that pawn on d4 falls. So instead, Ivanchuk has gotten very, very creative here. He's actually given the pawn on e5, and now pushed d5. What's the idea behind this? The point is, I give you back a, a pawn, I don't care, I had an extra pawn anyway, but that bishop, is looking exactly. hitting its own pawn hitting its own pawn and if you want to activate it you're gonna to have to give me back the pawn anyway mm. so it's it's very very clever uh, clever idea by the way there was a question a few times now in the chat uh, yeah the match will end if one player reaches eight and a half unlike the previous match so Ivanchuk is three points away and Gata four points away from winning the match with six games six games to go is that correct uh there are where are we at? Six There's games ten, yes, ten games played so far. So what just happened? The rooks. So came black off. did indeed play the move e4 to activate the bishop. White uh, took back that pawn. Then a rook exchange here on f1. Queen takes and queen c7 and king h1. Very logical move, king h1, because that king was on this horrible diagonal where there can be some very very nasty checks on d4 or queen b6. So the king here is a lot safer. Look at that diagonal. You're not going to have any uh, any problems there. Black has a beautiful square on e5 where the queen cannot be easily challenged and from there attacks the pawns. But in the meantime, the pawn on c4 has dropped. Black is actually going all in for an attack here. Queen here, bishop e5 wants uh, to mate on h2. And if you play h3, I will maybe sacrifice. Yeah. White wants, of a course, nice a queen exchange. Move. He could have taken, I guess, e7 was, was hanging, but... I oh, know the bishop, the knight was also hanging. Never but mind me. This is very tricky. If you go h3, I'm going to take you, yeah. take you, take you, and then check in the end. But oh. if you go g3, the pawn drops. So the position is very, very messy. Bishop g4. Bishop g4, in my opinion, was just winning here. Bishop g4, maybe though I missed something, actually. The point was queen takes, queen takes, 
And then if not, bishop f3. It looked extremely scary, yeah. but maybe, in fact, we now see this idea, but, but maybe there is, a, there is a defense, and maybe this defense also applied earlier. Uh, knight e3, bishop d4 is a possibility at some point, with the idea of bishop takes, so rook b4 designed to prevent that, but rook c8 giving up this uh, bishop, the point is rook c1 check, and when you block here, the point is I'm going to take you, Let's queen remove takes, the and arrows. queen takes. I'm struggling to I'm follow. sorry guys. <laughs> But it, it, was, it was a beautiful tactic, unfortunately not checkmate. enough time. Whoa. The first checkmate of the game. Look at Kamsky, he is laughing again. Wow. And wow, that wow. was crazy. Kamsky was doing Kamsky so was well. Kamsky was totally in the driver's yeah. seat and Ivanchuk tricks him again. That was, that was incredible. The first checkmate of the of the of the match as well, and that means that Ivanchuk is now only uh, two win or two points away from winning this match. But what a, another crazy game! I mean, we haven't had one single, we haven't had one moment to take a, a breather. Did I say first checkmate of the game of the match? Of course, um, they've been trading blows, but lately it seems like Ivanchuk. I'm not even like it's not that he's out playing Gata, but you know, in these tricky sometimes somehow he gets the last laugh at the moment with this C2 with this checkmate. Yeah, but okay, I mean it's it's a two-point gap, anything can still of happen. Course. One thing that's telling here though is Gata plays one e4 and Ivanchuk responds with c5. We've got an open Sicilian on the board, which is a bit unusual because Ivanchuk has a two-point lead. You could try and nurse it, play solidly, play yeah. e4, e5, just mirror your opponent's moves. But Ivanchuk says, no, it's okay, we'll play Sicilian, we'll go, we'll have a crazy game, if, if that's what it takes. However, a lot of pieces have been exchanged here. And the question is, White has a bunch of space here on the queen side. He is a little bit better, but is that enough? Again, I've said this a few times in the match so far, but for, for anyone new, uh, anyone new to, to this uh, commentary here, when you have a space advantage, your opponent usually ha finds it more difficult to place his pieces on good squares. But if you've exchanged a bunch of pieces like they have here then it's kind of like you know it's not so difficult mm. if you have two pieces finding good scores for two pieces is a lot easier than finding good scores for four of course, yeah. right so here uh, a lot of pieces have been exchanged and you have to feel that Ivanchuk is doing okay he wants the bishops to come off the board and although black hasn't developed this bishop white hasn't developed this bishop so they're even there and uh, Black is soon going to castle. In fact, he'll be the first guy to castle. I'm almost hoping, you know, that this is just gonna be... At the moment, it looks like it could be a calm game, you know, not these crazy tactical fireworks that we've been seeing, exchanging blows. It would almost be nice to get one breather of a game, you know, just get castled. It's not symmetrical, though, so that's the only thing, because uh, White has the majority on the queen side, Black the majority on the king side. Um, but maybe even the players, you know, would be happy to catch catch a breath. <laughs> yeah, and but you've hit a, you've hit on a really really good point. I don't necessarily think the players want to catch a breath. I think yeah. Ivanchuk would be very happy. happy yeah. But, but Gata, Gata with, especially with the white pieces trailing by two points now with only five games to go. Do you think White is better here, a smidgen? I think, objectively speaking, it's it's equal. However, I think from a practical perspective. White has to be a little bit more careful with his king. Mm. Some queen g5, for example, could immediately threaten checkmate. Um, and white, uh, black, what he has to be careful for is at some point this majority, that is a more dangerous majority because it's easier to push those pawns mm. and potentially get a pawn that can queen than to push this majority over here. For starters, black's king is probably going to be here. So if you start pushing these pawns, you're going to weaken your own king. White can push his pawns more freely. On the other hand, what counters this? What counters this? Uh, what counters this sort of argument that white, uh, that black has a little bit more danger, is the fact that white has to progress on the light squares here and here in order to make a breakthrough. But black has excellent control of those light squares, so we're not really seeing those possibilities. And more pieces are being exchanged. Gata takes a different approach. Uh, I like what Gata is doing here, and I think. You know, as a lot of these pieces come off the board, in King and Pawn Endgames, space advantage once again can become very, and even in Rook and Pawn Endgames, can become a huge factor. Mm. That's one of the things that makes chess confusing. You know, sometimes you're, you're giving a general guideline, which is, hey, you know, the less pieces on the board, 
the less that space is a concern. And then they come and they tell you, actually, but there's so many exceptions to the rules. Uh, so here, seems like black is safe, but I think if white wants to press, he's going to have to push, uh, push these three pawns. Rook a4, very, very clever use of the pieces here, uh, rook a4. And one of the things that you might notice here is this move, multi-purpose move. I think the main idea is rook b4 and saying, this pawn on b7, there's another feature of the position that hurts black, which is... The backward pawn. Exactly, exactly. When you have this pawn on a5 and this pawn on a6 here, this pawn is backward. The second you push, it's very difficult to, mm. to do that. You're going to lose the pawn. So it's hard. That's why we call it backward pawn. And white is thinking, let me put a rook on b4, and if I can pick up that pawn... And look at Ivanchuk, once again, has gone into deep thinking mode. Welcome, Zivit, by the way, uh, another, another legend of the game in the chat. Um, and yeah, so you are, for anyone like Zivit who might be joining just now, uh, the score is currently Ivanchuk has a two-point lead, six and a half, four and a half, with five games to go. Yeah, and... Queen c7 here, I think it's a smart move. It's prophylaxis in chess. Prophylaxis meaning that you sort of anticipate what your opponent might do, might want to do like rook b4. You say, okay, if I think you're going to do rook b4, I'm going to prepare queen takes a5. And also and I'll preparing rook uh, d8, I guess, to contest the d file. Actually, in fact, I think that might be even, that's the primary point. Contest that open file. Very, very good point. That is the only open file of the position. So we see rook b4 and... Now rook d8 and queen f3. You notice Ivanchuk is going for this pawn, says, okay, or Gata rather, says, okay, you can take my a5 pawn, I'll take your b7 pawn. Strategically, that's usually good for black because that's a backward pawn. You're happy to get rid of the weakness. But if that rook enters b7, that queen on f3, there's going to be a threat of checkmate. My mm. pieces are going to be very, very active. So you have to be very, very careful. Who would you pick here? Uh, I, w I would take Gata here, uh, although I think it's very, very close. But I like the fact that White's pieces are a little bit more actively placed here. But Black is super, super solid position. It's hard to see how you're going to make progress. I love this move, though. Mm. Rook b6. Draw agreed. Wow. That happened out of nowhere. So I guess Rook b6 was accompanied, accompanied uh, with a accompanied by a draw offer from Gata, which was instantly accepted from Ivanchuk. Ivanchuk must, of course, have the match situation at the back of his mind. He, uh, the players need to reach eight and a half to win it, and Ivanchuk is now just one and a half point away. David Howell in the chat is saying a strange decision to offer the draw, you mean? Yeah. I, I think mean, Gata offered, right? Gata offered the draw, and Ivanchuk maybe accepted it faster, The fa one of the fastest draw except, uh, except yeah. acceptance that I've ever seen I mean but strange given the match situation uh, maybe a lot of confidence in in uh, in Ivanchuk's uh, technique so we've got four games to go it's a two point Gata gap does not look happy we saw him I mean he's been taking his losses and I'll you know he's been taking them well uh, and yeah the, the, there's a lot of grandmasters in the chat and they all agree that it's a strange strange draw for of course, as yeah. Chess Weeb is pointing out, there is huge mutual respect between the two players. But I don't think that takes away from the fact that they both want to win this match, of course. Is it possible that it could be a mouse slip? Is that completely something we can rule out? Maybe you it, accidentally click? Is it just one click to offer? Or two? I think you can have the settings one way or the other. Um, I would be surprised. I mean, also, I think if it was a mouse click, we would have seen more more of a reaction true true i suspect it it wasn't so here by the way super critical uh, time here because we've got two minutes against three minutes uh for for gata and the position is extremely sharp notice what we're seeing here we're seeing a sicilian uh starting uh, as an opening and the sicilian is maybe the most aggressive opening it's in the chess. first sicilian we've had in this it's, match i oh, think it's the first more. sicilian that gata has played yeah, but the, la the previous time they sort of switched to yeah. Sicilian, right? Um, as the as the match goes on, they're happy to play more aggressively, which is which is an interesting strategy. Given that you might expect Ivanchuk to play more solidly, um, but Alex, here can it's you huge. ever take on H two, or is that way too greedy? Yeah, so you can take on H two, but keep one thing in mind: look at the pawns here. They're pawns. They're light squared pawns. So if you take on H two, even maybe I can sacrifice here. Queen takes, and long term, giving up an exchange. This bishop is the most important black minor piece. 
Why? Because when you put your pawns like this, your dark squares are very, very weak as a result. So you have to be very, very careful. And uh, grandmasters, they're, they're conditioned bad things to usually happen if I give up that bishop in these structures. Um, and now where is the where is the uh, the white king going to go? Is the white king gonna castle queenside as well, which might look weird with the semi-open c file? Or do we go kingside, but then the, the attack might come very quickly? In general, we don't want to castle queenside here because in this structure, missing, as you point out, missing that c pawn, and white already is on the c file here, mm -hmm. we really don't want that. Also, the pawns on a6 and b6, they're very, very, uh, they're not as stable because they've moved one rank up. So you have to be very careful. In general, you want to castle Brave the Storm. I just want to say there's been an interesting discussion in the chat. A couple of games ago, Niels uh, Grandelius was saying, you know, that Ivanchuk seems to have gotten overall the edge out of the opening. Um, and I see a doctor, da, 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 not out of the house. I wonder if the fact that Ivanchuk is still an active player gives him an edge in the openings. Gata is also still very much an active player, not just online, but uh, also over the board. And especially online, he seems to be playing quite a lot more. So I don't think it's anything to do with who's more active. But Gata did say, I'm, one thing I'm curious about is to ask Ivanchuk, did he do any preparation? Gata said on Twitter he wouldn't. Who knows if that's true or not? I kind of believe it, but we'll ask. We'll ask them in the interviews. So, so this position, by the way, let's 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 talk about about this game. I think because this could potentially more or less end the end the match, yeah. right? If we see an Ivanchuk victory here, then we would need to see Gata win three games in a row to not three out of three to not lose the match. And Gata is in a precarious situation. He's got forty five seconds against two minutes and fourteen seconds, and this is a Sicilian opposite side castling. So, I think. Wow, and I really, I like Ivanchuk's position, and here we go. In general, when we have opposite side castling, we have to be a lot more liberal with sacrificing mm -hmm. material. One pawn, not a big deal. Why? Because the name of the game is to checkmate the enemy king. So here, Black has lost the pawn. All endgames are, are going to be terrible for him, but he does not care because the queen is now uh, x-raying the white king. We've got the knight on b5 can sometimes be a bit unstable. And you may actually see a sacrifice here on e4. For example, a very typical sacrifice in these Sicilians is knight takes e4, f takes e4, bishop takes e4. And be careful because that's two pawns and a rook. And that can get even worse if, let's say, the queen is on a8, uh, which it may move to if at some point uh, black wants to put a rook on b8. Grandmaster Rusemov thinks this is lost uh, for black. I also, my first impression was also that I really like white, but this is a move that for me is very hard to understand. I thought I want my rook on the H file to support the pawns. Yeah, I mean, objectively speaking, I agree. I, I think that the objectively white is at least a lot better, but in a blitz scenario, it's almost a bullet scenario. I think the position might be easier to play for black. Yeah. Because, you know, you can at any point maybe sacrifice here, and, you know, if things go wrong, okay, you, you lose, but black can break with d5 and notice white has shifted his forces away to the queens, to the center and the queen side, meaning white will probably at some point maybe think about attacking, but right now he's more focused on diffusing the situation and what he wants to do, his basic strategy is I've grabbed the pawn here on b5, yeah. now I'm going to take it to an end game that will favor me, but wait a second, knight f5, has Gata missed this idea? The point is the bishop is on pre, and if you take, I'm going to take this bishop on d5. Notice the speed with which Ivanchuk actually played this move, and potentially it's a game ender. You cannot defend, you cannot defend like this because I take you on e7, and then this knight here is falling. So I think you have to take, but then queen takes Ten d5, seconds for all Gata. of the pieces come into play. I think we might be seeing just an absolute end ending moment here rook d8 but can i not just exchange the queens can i not maybe even grab this knight for free here can i not win a piece ivanchuk is thinking what can i do for example maybe you can even take here and after takes 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 we can take on c5 super complex he decides to grab this knight on e5 and i think you're just up a piece and gata is playing here but okay what what else can you do if you're gata but white is up a piece and on top of this maybe bishop d4 and he's the one with the attack so uh, bishop e2 instead threatening this knight knight e6 and maybe g6 breaking down the defense of this uh this knight 
could potentially be very scary. On the other hand, bishop f6 would suddenly get onto a huge diagonal, so maybe this is what Ivanchuk is weighing up right now. How to best proceed? He proceeds with h6. Now, this knight is holding the position together for black. Alex, R I'm gonna lose my... I'm seeing rumors in the chat. Oh, <laughs> shit. Yeah, shit. <laughs> Hikaru, thank oh you so much. That is incredible. And what a moment they're choosing to turn in. This is insane. Thank you so much, Hikaru. We are catching it at a moment which is really, truly crunch time. Holy smokes. This situation. What's actually is, happened in the game? Gata resigned. <laughs> Ivancho converted. Wow. Beautiful, beautiful situation. And Ivanchuk is not playing. He might think it's over. He might actually think it's over. Because He's Ivanchuk offline. is not moving with the black pieces. He is offline. And I think a little bit of controversy because Gata is probably telling Ivanchuk he's now back on. Gata is probably telling him, wait a second, Ivanchuk, you still need to make sure that I don't beat you three times in a row. That's the situation. For anyone new here, it's a match. Fiona's fight night. This is Fiona. I'm Alex. <laughs> Fiona's fight night. <laughs> Welcome to All Raiders. I think we were both just so overwhelmed for a second, but thank you so much for that again. We're going to focus. It is potentially the last game of the match. We are watching two absolutely legendary players, uh, Vasily Ivanchuk and Gata Kamsky, who more of you as Hikaru viewers might be familiar with. He's a five-time US champion. But Ivanchuk, uh, he was a world blitz champion, a world rapid champion, and both of them absolutely legendary. The score is currently 8-5 in favor of Ivanchuk, so he only needs a draw to wrap this up. Yeah, so a lot of, we're assuming a lot of Hikaru's raiders are probably uh, North American, um, and and maybe they're, they're rooting for Gata Kamsky, but Kanta is it's a, a big mass ass here. Yes. This would be I mean, this is kind of like the football equivalent coming back from like being five or six goals down. Because when you're facing someone as strong as Ivanchuk, three games, you have to win on command. The only good thing for Gata, he will have white on two of them. So he has to strike here and then, and then we'll see what happens. Uh, Black is playing knight d7. We've got a London system. And Gata is deep in thought, which is fascinating because he's been playing these kind of systems on his life for decades, literally decades. And now he's thinking. But that's not because he doesn't know theory. It's probably because he knows too much theory. <laughs> He's got like five different ways that he can approach it. I mean, once again, it's also uh, the game has changed now, you know, uh, because before it was just game by game, but suddenly Gata is in a must-win situation yeah. and that changes, you know, the opening choices, your approach to the games. Yeah, and by the way, if anybody who arrived here and is thinking, oh, I more or less just missed all of the action, if you're a fan of, of either of these players or both of these players, we will have them... Uh, on for an interview uh, after the match is finished, so you may may wish to stick around for that. Um, early thoughts on this game? I think it's uh, interestingly earlier where the Grandmaster Rustamov in the chat uh, was saying that Ivanchuk so far had been avoiding meeting the London system with D5, going more for different systems. But I guess again, now Ivanchuk is in a position, you know, where draw is fine. We were saying, Komarov in the pre-show was saying, uh, you want to against Ivanchuk, you know, make things a bit boring. You know, he's a very creative player. But I think here it might just suit him, you know, to get this uh, solid, quiet kind of position. Yeah, I mean, I think if you're Ivanchuk, you're very, very happy here. You're offering a queen exchange. You've already exchanged one pair of minor pieces. And on top of this, uh, here the queens do come off the board. And, you know, black just wants a very, very solid position. On the other hand, do not uh, think that this is going to be trivial because white has ideas involving b4, b5. And black, actually, what he's doing with this rook move is what he's actually doing is he's preventing the move what b5. The there? cameras have seemed to have the, misadjusted. The players, I think we might have lost Vasil. We lost Vasil. <laughs> Vasil just disappeared from the Zoom chat. I'm not sure where he is. I'm going to have to, Alex, I'll let you take over the game. We're going to have to call him back after this game. Uh, we saw before that he had somewhat, somewhat dubious internet. So hopefully, hopefully it'll be fine. I'll just let you take over the game and recut out Gata. Sure. And hopefully we'll get, we'll get Vasil back later. Yeah, but perhaps we need to not show Gata, Gata's head merging into Gata's head. 
I will leave it like that just because in case Vasil comes back, I hope it will it will stay the way it is now. Apologies about that, guys. Once again, live live TV. What can we do? Uh, not sure what happened. What happened to Ivanchuk? But we'll make sure to to get him back in time for the interviews. And now, <sighs> okay, we're back. Apologies. Apologies about. The... No, we're not back at all. On the bright side, people are probably enjoying my uh, my despair, my technical despair. I'll let you talk about about the game, Alex, while I try try to fix fix things over here. Yeah. So again, this game really is crunch time. Can we just sorry, just left click somewhere? Perfect. Thank you. Uh, so this game is is really crunch time, and one of the things we see is White has these pawns on the queen side. They're more advanced and. White would love to break with b5. He'd love to push that b pawn where the arrow was marked a second ago. But unfortunately, black has a good, good grip on that square. And what can you actually do uh, as white in order to make progress? It can be very, very tricky. And so one of the things that sometimes they do is that bishop that's sitting on f1, you might just sacrifice it. Take the pawn on a6 over on the queen side. And the idea there is that those pawns those queenside pawns can actually run very, very fast, even though you're going to be down a piece. So we might see something like that, but instead the direction uh, takes a different turn. White puts his light squared bishop on a different diagonal, h3 to c8, and now the knight is on e6, threatening to take the pawn on d4, so white drops the bishop back to e3. Again, let's remind uh, the chat, Gata Kamsky absolutely needs to win this game, and that is coloring the, uh, the way in which it's being played by both players. So knight e2 here, Ivanchuk has the huge advantage that he can basically toy with black where both players sometimes will calculate, oh, this variation is good, but it's not quite good enough. It's a bit dull. It's a bit bland. It's not going to be good enough to actually win the game. And so Ivanchuk can kind of psychologically toy uh, with, uh, with Gata. So we'll see what happens. But Gata is doing a wonderful thing here from a game perspective. He's got 30, um, he's got over a minute on the clock and 30 seconds for uh, Ivanchuk. So this is, this is, I think, the biggest source of chance. They're contesting the e-file here. It's absolutely critical. And one possibility uh, that I see here for white is to move bishop d7, maybe even first bishop d6, take control of all of these squares here and say, I want you to trade me. And then when you trade, I'm going to be the one that has the e-file under control. Maybe I can play, play for an advantage like that. Otherwise, the fear for Gata is a lot of pieces are coming off the board at some point at some point, there aren't going to be enough pieces left in the position. One last thing that I want to say about this. Bishop c8, at the right moment, can pick away at the base of this pawn. So I actually think Gata is doing a great job here. And bishop f5, probably a forced, probably an essential move. Uh, and the idea is, otherwise, that bishop c8 could have gotten very risky. But now, G now Gata has something to chew on. As, as we say, these pawns are doubled, they're weak, they're isolated. This pawn is also isolated. And maybe down the line, you want to bring the king here. But be be careful, because if you have a position where, let's say you have your king here, you know, if you're not careful, you don't have that many squares and your king could get into trouble. So it's like, it's, it's a game of cat and mouse here. Black is just hoping to play very, very solidly, rook g6, and sort of say to white, okay, you have a bit more space here, you have a better pawn structure, but how are you actually going to break through? And this is, this is the big problem here. I think objectively, uh, it probably is a draw. So white does approach with the king, but you have to be careful because now if you could, if you could just put this bishop on h6, it would be checkmate. If you're black, yeah. you can put that bishop on h6. So you have to be a little bit careful with these also tricks. The Wait a times. second though, the pawn. The pawn. <laughs> 7.9 seconds for Ivanchuk and the pawn has dropped and I think it's, suddenly it's over. I don't know if king e6 was forced. I don't know, could he have gone to g6? But suddenly I think it's more or less over. Ivanchuk is playing for that activity, but this bishop is terrible. This bishop is great. And importantly, the king is so far up the board and will assist this pawn. And in fact, the rook actually is the one that assists. And suddenly Gata has been completely clutched. <laughs> he's gone ahead and he's actually... I actually... He's I, actually managed it. So the first out of 
Uh, well, he can, yeah, he still needs to win two to tie the score. So the first one down, two to go for Gata. One down, two to go. And just one thing, look at what he's done. D4, oh, wow. F5. The Dutch. The Dutch. It's known to be, it's Simon Williams for those who are Ginger GM fans. It's known to be a, a, a wild opening where you go for the throat. So Gata is... Is, is giving it all he's got, but it's also a very risky opening because you give yourself some big weaknesses like this outpost here on e5 for the knight. So this is the kind of opening, it can go very, very well or it can go very, very badly. We'll see what happens. Of course. Um, there's a few people actually, I didn't even get around to VIPing everyone who, who was here. I'll, I'll get around to it afterwards for now. Chespe also, of course, Hikaru and Alexander, in case they're ever in here, uh, will be... There'll always be VIPs in here, for now we'll focus on the chat. I also, unfortunately, I don't think we're going to get uh, Ivanchuk back until, at least until the full time is over. I don't want to disturb the players now at the crucial time in the match. But there will be still interviews with him afterwards. Uh, and if there's an Armageddon, we'll also make sure. But Gata still needs to win two games to get to the Armageddon game. Yeah, and to be honest with you, this is already an absolutely critical moment because Black actually gave up a pawn here on the queen side. White grabbed that pawn, but in exchange, Black came in with the queen with a check, now comes in with a knight with pressure on this knight on c3. White has to defend, but the question is, who's bluffing who, right? Because White is up a pawn, but on the other hand, uh, Black has the initiative. The question is though, will the initiative be very strong and worth more than a pawn, or will it die down? And um, when you when you have the initiative for those who maybe are relatively new to the game, the key is to play with a lot of energy, a lot of dynamism, play fast, pay attention to time, because white, look at what white does. He develops, he completes his development, brings the king to safety. The problem with an initiative is it can be very quick to, to, to go. Suddenly you no longer have that that initiative, your opponent is no longer in the back foot, whereas an extra pawn, that can last all the way to the end game. Absolutely. I'm actually, I'm so, <laughs> I'm completely overwhelmed, but I know I need to keep it together. We are in the crunch time. And I think if anyone can do it, you know, Gata, he has been in so many high pressure situations. Uh, we've seen him, you know, he still, he looks much more focused now, I think. Like at some point in the match, you know, he lost two games in a row. Things were not going so greatly, but now full focus is back. And, you know, he has it within, within his grasp again. Yeah, well, within but his this, grasp. This game is looking <laughs> difficult, of course, but... I mean, it's, it's mathematically within his grasp, but I don't know about you, Fiona, but generally speaking, I would not feel too comfortable having to score no. two out of two against Vasily Ivanchuk yes. uh, in any situation uh, with any time odds and any piece odds, more or less, you know? And here, but okay, let's talk the game itself. You know, on the one hand, why is up a pawn? But guess what? It's actually not that important mm. for now. Because if you guys know, for those of you who are familiar with, say, the Benko Gambit, it's an opening where you give up a pawn on the queen side, but usually, on the other hand, the nice thing about having one pawn less is you typically have more files for your heavy pieces. The heavy pieces are the rooks and the queens, your heavy pieces to, you know, pressure the opponent. Uh, and so white has the extra pawn, but sometimes that can be a little bit of a burden. Notice how white has to make sure that those pawns are safe at all times. In the meantime, you might say, that's a beast on e5, but is it really? I was gonna ask, can I go to uh, knight c4? Is there a concrete problem? Uh, knight c4 is black, one of these knights. The answer <laughs> has just been given to you by Gata. <laughs> so uh, you might now be because facing really some kind of cheating to, I really suspicions. want to get rid of this knight on e5, which is looking uh, like such a monster. So that would be my main concern. But Whoa, what? some tactics here, I don't, understand he's just giving up an, ex an exchange for a pawn as far as i understand you're going to take here then we're going to take you here take take oh no 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 <laughs> take take everything gets taken let's remove take. the errors <laughs> this is getting no but but i think indeed. i think you take here take here take here take ah no 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 because if you take here in the end you have some rook c8 check and it's super super nasty so rook takes rook takes queen takes rook c8 check would actually happen and now same idea queen takes rook takes it gets super messy, but these both players seem to know what they're doing here. Queen takes a2. Um, but I think, you know, one thing you have to be careful of, a lot of material has just left the board. And now, um, you know, black does have some pressure here. But the problem is white doesn't have that many pieces left. Maybe you go something like rook c1 or maybe you exchange. 
And if White can just consolidate, then he'll be in great shape. One of the reasons he'll be in great shape is two pawns here in the center usually are quite strong. And in this case, this bishop so far is kind of blunted by the effect of that pawn on d4. So White does go rook c1. And Ivanchuk, I think, with precise play, the biggest problem he has left to solve here is this pin. But suddenly now it's gone. Because it's a check, now we're seeing queen takes c4, rook takes c4. And honestly, I think Ivanchuk... When the dust settles, white will yeah. be a pawn up. Now, there are still some tactics. For example, maybe some rook a2 pressing this bishop. And if you defend it, maybe I'm going to go f4, break you down, and then take you. Some kind of tactical ideas like this. Then when you take, bishop takes d4, it gets very messy. Maybe rook c2 trying to exploit this pin. And again, with these ideas of playing f4, maybe even f4 first, and then rook c2. It's very kind of advanced tactical ideas, but... This pin is quite annoying, and to be honest with you, I'd love to see Ivanchuk's face right now. We it's don't know out of what happened control. to him. F4. He just disappeared we are from seeing the this, but wait, this is a huge moment because if takes, the problem is we take, 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 that's a check, oh. and the point is the white king is actually stuck here. Gata is probably feeling really good about himself. White has to give up this pawn on e3. There's going to be rook f2 check ideas. It's a good thing this pawn is on b6 because now bishop takes d4 doesn't work. The rook is now defended. King f7 holding onto the pawn on e6. You can maybe go bishop b4 here because we cannot take. And suddenly has has got a, has got a, got a good resource here. I think rook f2 check. You need to do something quick. And now the question is, do you grab this pawn or do you go defensive? Gata feels he has to grab the pawn. He's also attacking here. So I'm expecting maybe rook takes with check. King moves and rook takes b7. But I think, you know, the question is which pawn is more dangerous, but I actually think the e3 pawn is more dangerous in combination with this rook, because while the white, the black king is pretty safe, this king is potentially vulnerable. We might see some rook b2 hit the bishop, and if the bishop leaves this diagonal, we might see some bishop c3. So, lovely move from, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm running out of steam <laughs> here, I'm running out of steam, I hope I'm not, not speaking too quickly, but... Bishop e5, very nice idea, just covering uh, against d6, but I really liked rook d7. The point was you couldn't take the pawn because rook d6 check um, would have lost the bishop. Now, what Gata wants to do, if, if, I, if I understand, is basically... Take on h2 and bishop yeah, g3. Yeah, take on h2, bishop g3 and combine. Bishop rook and pawn can combine, even weave a mating net. Now it's getting super hectic here. You cannot take here because bishop c3 would end Gata's hopes. So I think he absolutely has to take. And he's probably not happy about this because I think Ivanchuk has tricked him again. He is, I think, what, what uh, Gata had and what he has now. I still think there are some winning chances though. Wait a second though, maybe I'm completely wrong. The king could run to g2 potentially and start to try and grab these pawns. But Gata goes back to e4, which surprises me. And now there are checks but it's going to be very hard to make progress because if you go here rook d7 and, and i think, think gata says that is that and well what a pity uh, for gata who was putting on such a great fight even this last game i'm gata and vasil gata can you hear me yes i uh, i can hear you yes <laughs> Uh, Vasil, I think we lost your camera. Do you know if we can get it back? So what I need to do? Uh, interview. Uh, yes, we will do an interview. If yes, you... yes, but uh, how I can improve camera? <laughs> it's just turned on at the moment. Or it's completely, I don't know, maybe you're in darkness. Ah, uh, uh -huh. so maybe I will restart my computer and come back. <laughs> okay, that's great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. okay, let me remove, uh, let me just cut out the, pro okay, Gata, we'll talk to you uh, first okay. while, while Vasil resorts uh, his computer. In the end, it wasn't quite enough, but what a tipsy, uh, turvy uh, match. And also, yeah. you seem to be having quite a lot of uh, fun. Okay, some games were more fun than others, of course, but what are your yeah. impressions? Well, I thought it was a very exciting match. Uh, a lot of blunders, but a lot of interesting concepts. Uh, strategy, we saw strategy, we saw end games, we saw uh, tactics, uh, attacking chess, good defenses. I, I think we saw it all in this match, right? And um, I have to admit that the second half, I was uh, probably a little bit more tired, so I didn't play as well. But uh, overall, I think the quality was pretty good. At least I thought it was very interesting. Vasily, of course, a deserved winner because. Uh, in the second half of the match, he simply killed me. 
uh, yeah. I mean, I had some chances, but uh, yeah, uh, he was playing much better. But I, I think it was very enjoyable. Um, so uh, I don't know. Let's see what the viewers say, what the experts say on the commentary <laughs> team, right? Well, for us, I was going to say, you know, you said that the match uh, was high quality. If anything, the quality was too high for us. Sometimes, you know, we're watching a match uh, of two, two absolute legends. So sometimes it's, it's tough for the commentators to understand what was going on. Um, and yeah, what can I? I, what I, can... I think you should ask Vasily, you know, to make uh, to start his own streaming <laughs> and um, you know, and actually, you know, explain some games. Uh, uh, that would be actually wonderful. Absolutely, uh, because it is incredibly interesting to see his insight, like the way he sees chess. I mean, obviously, he's older, more experienced, and uh, you know. Yeah, um, you know, he, he is a very tough customer. I mean, I think he adapted to me <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and he actually proved why, you know, he was the, I think it was a, at least twice or three times rapid or blitz champion, world champion mm -hmm. in the last uh, four or five years. He didn't play in the last uh, world rapids and blitz because it was in Russia, I think. But before that, I think he played, he played magnificently, right? So uh, I think uh, he just proves why he, is, uh, he was always considered to be one of the best uh, blitz players. Absolutely. Okay. And what did you think going into the match? You two, of course, have such a long history of playing against uh, each other. I know you tweeted, yeah. you know, that you weren't going to prepare at least uh, chess wise or opening wise because he plays everything. And you said, you know, yeah. you're kind of retired, although I think that's not yeah. quite truthful. Um, but what going into the match, you know, uh, did you do any kind of prep or even just, you know, no, psychological? I didn't, I, didn't do any, I didn't do any prep. I decided, you know, just going to play. You know, go at it because it was obvious to me that uh, you know, the openings will not be the phase where it will be decisive, right? Because as you guys see, the openings were basically stepping stone towards the middle game and the end game, and that's where we're crossing source all the time. Uh, the only time he absolutely crushed me in the opening, I think, it was that in Sicilian Paulson, and then he really surprised me with that uh, Bishop D6, Queen D2, and I was like thinking for a long time, mm. can I take that pawn in H2? It was it was so dangerous. And of yeah. course, if I played Bishop E7, I'm strategically lost. And um, that was uh, that was the only game where I felt that he actually crushed me in the opening. Uh, but apart from that, uh, most of the games were decided in the middle game, <clears throat> and we also saw a lot of end games, right? And that's where the extremely interesting battles uh, battles that happened. Mm -hmm. So I, I was very happy about this match. So thank you for organizing it. And, um, you know, I hope the viewers also got a lot of pleasure uh, from watching uh, the games, right? And uh, of course, let's uh, see what Vasily will say once he comes back uh, to Zoom, right? Absolutely. <laughs> he, I think he said he is rebooting his computer, so... Yes, hopefully he will be back. Uh, Gata, yeah. Gata I, would, I would love to ask you a, a question. It looked at some point there were three games to go. It looked as though... Um, you know, you had to win three, three in a row. It looked like an almost impossible task, but then you won the first game. And in that last game with the black pieces, it looked to us like you were, you were in command for a while. How, how did you fancy your chances or how did you evaluate that? Uh, well, position? I thought, uh, you know, once I lost the three games, but one of those games, remember there was the kid and he gave me the attack with the queen on h5, bishop takes on g3, bishop on g4. Right, and then I made a comeback, and then there was a mating uh, net, and then I blundered the queen of eight map, mate in one, right? Mm. Uh, yes. Remember, was, I, I took his rook, the, and he gave me queen of, of eight crucial, mate. I, I would say one of the crucial moments uh, yeah. of the match. That that was the crucial game because I think I was winning in that game, and then I blundered mate in one, and then I laughed, and then realized, okay, I'm probably gonna lose this match because that was the pivotal game actually. If I, had won the, if I had won that game, we would be even, right? And then yeah. uh, the, the match would go anyway. Absolutely. But wondering made in one, okay, I, I understand, like, you know. <laughs> then but I laughed, big, yeah. You were, I just wanted to say, because you were saying, you know, how the fans, well, the fans, I can just tell you, of course, I was reading the chat throughout the match. And for those of you still 3,500 watching, because we got some big raids from Alexandra Botas and from Hikaru during the match. So everyone who's still here, Gata, you stream yourself. Everyone uh, should go, of course, and uh, give you a follow. And there was an excellent suggestion, actually, in the chat. You know, you're saying uh, Vasil should start streaming himself but maybe you could invite him as a guest to one of your streams i would definitely uh, watch um, that 
um, maybe you should invite because I have no idea how to do all this techno stuff. You know, I'm like a, I'm like a dinosaur in this, uh, well, so I have no idea. I have an even better idea. One more thing I was saying, people in the chat, they love the match, but also Open Field Media, a uh, big thanks to them who are sponsoring the match. They were in the chat and they were saying they would gladly uh, sponsor a rematch at some point. And I think, uh, well, for sure, we would very, be up, very much be up for that. I think the chat as well. Gata, would well, you be up for a rematch? You know what I think? I think you should actually start uh, before the competitors do. Before I think the chess.com and chess24 they will grab this idea, right? So you should guys really start staging the uh, these matches of the older guys who are really, like really famous, like like Shiro, right? Like Kramnik, uh, and all those guys that were neglected because of these youngsters that are taking uh, the top stage in the modern days. But if you guys start doing these matches on a regular basis, I think it will be awesome. We'll Absolutely. get to see all those legends from the past, like the Fire and Board, right? The positional game. The Gelfand would be, Boris would be, I think he would be very, um, you know, uh, receptive to the idea as well. We should, you should guys definitely bring uh, all those guys. Absolutely. And then the, these guys, uh, like they can still kick ass, trust me, all right? Yeah, well, we saw, we saw it tonight. Um, actually, let me ask you, how do you, you know, there were so many tactical, uh, you know, uh, fireworks and twists and turns and comebacks and one player is better than the other and turnarounds. How do you guys still stay uh, so sharp? I know you stream, you play, but do you still, you know, work on your chest? No, because we simply love the game. Mm. <laughs> you know, sometimes that feeling... You know, never goes. I just ask Vasily like uh, in the Skype because I haven't seen him play chess for so long. I ask him, Vasily, you probably miss chess because, you know, you look so happy playing. <laughs> right. And he said, yeah. So, you know, you should definitely ask Vasily about it because I thought he was very happy. You know, he actually, I probably, I, I, I probably think he had a lot of fun crushing me as well because, you know, <laughs> traditionally we have been the huge competitors, but we also uh, were pretty friendly. Like back in the 90s, we were very friendly, you know, uh, he knew my father, of course, and, um, you know, they had some crazy stories, but uh, okay, still. So, you know, a lot of stuff, a lot of friendly competition is always good. Absolutely. I can only second that. Um, I think, uh, do you have one more question? I'm going to see, let me just message on Skype, see if Vasil, oh, can I give him the link again? Of course. Where okay, was so Vasily, was just waiting for the Ivan link. will be joining us, I think, now in just a second uh, a lot of people by the way in the chat we were looking at and they they were remarking on this uh this this beautiful little creative idea with the the c2 uh, the c2 move in the end and wanted to sort of uh, bring that up i mean how is it, how did you feel when that c2 move uh, happened do you feel it had a an, an impact on on the match or on your psychology of it uh, in this end game or oh the c2 was, move that i blundered uh yeah, yeah. okay I, I just laughed because i blundered that i forgot it uh, but it was beautiful it was beautiful i mean the game was obviously a draw but then you know he found this resource and and that was uh, also psycho it was very psychological right he plays king f4 so i think he's just playing moves and then turns out <laughs> that that bishop is poison right okay um that was fantastic um um I, that that is why uh we'll all love a silly because he comes up with this sudden very unexpected ideas right i didn't see it at all i completely missed it i mean um and once uh, once he played it i realized you know what an idiot i am but then uh you know, I, but I didn't see it. So you have to be honest. He creates the chances out of nowhere. And uh, that's what happens. That's why we all love end games. So again, love... problem, I'm in darkness, sorry. Uh, so what I need to do, uh, maybe uh, I will uh, try to uh, do it on a tablet. Maybe it will be better. But is there, you ha there is no, it's your screen, right? You're not sitting in the dark. Yes, right? I'm like in darkness. I don't know why. It's sometimes <laughs> happen with my computer if uh, uh, he wants uh, uh, to make some renovation. Maybe I will try in a tablet. <laughs> sure, that's fine. Uh, if Sorry. you want, uh, Gata <laughs> also. Sure. Uh -huh. Is he not just yeah, in a dark I, room? Yeah, Vasil, can you like... try to turn, off the, turn on the light in your room? Because I see some, I see some blinking. In, yeah, uh, in room there are a lot of light, but this is problem with my computer. It's usually if a c computer needs to improve uh, 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 some improve windows, something like this, and in that time darkness in my computer. I don't know how 
Uh, uh, but, but, but maybe I can try restart again. Okay, I will do no, it. No, but don't worry. If, if you have a tablet, uh, that is fine. If not, just audio is okay. Oh, 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 oh okay. Oh, but we see I, I you. No, try... but Vasil, your camera is working. I think you just need to turn on the light in your room. No, no, uh, it's... Uh, uh, oh, it's uh, light is okay uh, uh, co co uh, in rooms there are a lot of light but this is problem with computer so i will try uh, to to since restart again and tablet also <laughs> just, just, just keep him on audio because uh, you know yeah yeah Basil, yes. don't don't worry about your camera it's fine uh, people can hear you that is plenty we saw you for most of the oh, game okay but anyway i will try uh, to to put in tablet just a moment Maybe you will see. <laughs> well, Agata, uh, you yeah. also. I know it's been a it's been a long night. If you want to go, I think that's completely fine. If you want to stick around, that's completely fine. But you're of course free to go. <laughs> all right, I, I'll go because um, uh, yeah, uh, I'm gonna take a look at my games. All right. Absolutely. Well, that's that's right. passion so and dedication you. right there. Agatha, thank you so much. It's been absolutely sure. fantastic having you and I already look forward to the rematch. Thank you thank very much. Thank you so much, much Fiona. Thank you guys thank and you um, take care. Thank, thank you. you.